Never have I faced soldiers of such conviction and belief. Jem'Hadar may be fearless, but they are predictable. Cardassians may be cunning, but they are cowards at heart. But these warriors of the Joint Order are different. They do not fear death, but they are not merely Jem'Hadar in Cardassian clothing. For they are as cruel and as cunning as any other Cardassian. They are Cardassians made Jem'Hadar. They are the Joint Orders and they are the most fanatical soldiers I have ever faced. You asked for it, and now I shall deliver. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the Joint Orders. So who are these mysterious warriors of the Dominion who seem to be instrumental in the final stages of the Dominion War? Who are these men who fight under the flag of the Joint Orders? Well, let's get into it. So firstly, let's explain exactly who they are. Who are these people? They are, in effect, the Dominion's replacement for the Guards Order. You will notice that there are three Joint Orders. There were two Guards Orders, the first and the second. The first was wiped out during the war. The second is now on its last legs and probably won't last too much longer, depending on when this video comes out. Suffice it to say that the Cardassian Guards Orders, their native elite units, have been, perhaps, some might say, deliberately placed in the line of fire so that the Dominion could then legitimately and for good reason bring out the Joint Orders, replacing them with a unit far more to the Dominion's taste. So, for the Dominion, the Joint Orders are a modern and totally loyal force. These are crack troops who can be relied upon to do whatever they are asked. They are loyal not to Cardassia, but to the Founders, to the Dominion. And that very much puts them at odds with almost every other part of the Cardassian military, which, you know, for the longest time you think about Damar and why men like Damar and Dukat happily went along with the Dominion. And it was because they believed that they could use the Dominion as a means to an end. And they didn't see that the Dominion had other plans. The Joint Orders are merely the first step in that plan to bring Cardassia truly into the Dominion. The Dominion, obviously, is not new to this kind of game. The Dominion has incorporated and assimilated dozens of species into its empire. The Dominion are not fools, and they've seen all the tricks in the book. They've seen client states try to manipulate them, use it for their own ends, play the system. The Dominion are very much wise to all of this, and they have a step-by-step -step process to, to fully Dominionize a people to ensure their lasting and total loyalty. And it starts with the Joint Orders. They are formally the 26th, 27th, and 28th Orders. So, officially, they are Cardassian units, but they are Cardassian units only in name. About 50% of the units is made up of Jem'Hadar. And not just any Jem'Hadar. Alpha Jem'Hadar. Jem'Hadar bred in the Alpha Quadrant. Bred for this war. Aside from the Jem'Hadar, who are obviously just bred for this, the other half of the joint orders are made up by... Cardassians. Now, in order to become a member of these elite, prestigious joint orders, you have to pass several selection criteria. That's before you even do the training. The selection criteria is as follows. You cannot have been born before 2340, so you must be at most 25 years old. If you're older than 25, you are not permitted to enter. So you can only be 25 or younger. They want young men and women. Also recruits who will not recall very vividly a time before the Dominion or indeed even before the Cardassians' war 
with the Federation. The next criteria is that you cannot have had any kind of connections to any of the prior regimes. They want effectively apolitical recruits or perhaps unideological recruits. They want people with no connection to prior regimes, be that the Obrecht regime, be that the Triumvirate, be that the Detapa Council. They don't want anyone with any connection to any of the prior regimes. If you're going to be connected to any regime, it must be the current Dominion-friendly regime. No other is acceptable. You must additionally be a physically superior specimen. You must measure up to the a demanding standard of uh, physical strength and endurance and stamina. You must profess the true and honest belief that the founders are gods. You must renounce any other gods, any other beliefs you may have, and accept the founders as your gods. And finally, you must swear unequivocally and unconditionally, you must swear allegiance to the Dominion. Not to Cardassia, not to your family or your, your leader, but to the Dominion. So as you can see here, what the Dominion want is an ideologically pure unit. A unit that is devoted wholly to the beliefs and goals of the Dominion. They may be Cardassians, but they are Dominion soldiers now. They are not Cardassian soldiers, they are soldiers of the Dominion. Now I'll talk briefly about the training. To say the least, it is extremely demanding. All recruits, be that privates all the way up to officers, on top of their obvious basic training, whereupon they would have been selected to enter this training program, they must undergo a 12-week Jem'Hadar-led training course. This is a training course that has been designed by the Jem'Hadar and is ultimately what they believe are the critical standards for any soldier of the Dominion to meet. So you will be trained by the Jem'Hadar in a course designed by them to ensure that you live up to their standards. Add to that, you will also have a Vorta-led ideological training course. You will be taught all the key tenets of the Dominion and your belief in the founders as gods will be further reinforced. For officers, this is a 16-week course. And of course, on top of all the normal physical stuff that they are required to do, they are also required to understand fully Dominion doctrine and tactics, such as it is. We'll say nothing more about that. Finally, to complete your training as a member of the Joint Order, you must carry out the execution of a dissident. This is a demonstration of your complete and unwavering loyalty to the Dominion and to the Founders. These are traitors to the Dominion and traitors to the Founders, and you will be the instrument of the Founders' justice. That's the training course. That's what they're asked to do to begin with. That's not even what they're asked to do on campaign. And if you are indeed capable of doing all that, then the Dominion has much work in store for you. I'll now briefly touch upon the equipment and tactics of these elite units. Suffice it to say that as the now politically favoured unit, the joint orders benefit from much. However, there are some notable exclusions. They don't make use of older equipment, even very good and reliable older equipment such as the Rysalak. Uh, they don't use it, they only use the Sartan. Uh, they also do not make use of the Hutet. At this point, there are actually a few Hutets running around Cardassian space. Not quite as many as there are Dominion battleships, but a decent number of Hutets. But they have not been issued to the Joint Orders. Those have firmly stayed with the Cardassian Central Command. But the Joint Orders are not without a new major capital ship. They are issued with the Janissary class battlecruiser. This is quite a large and formidable battlecruiser and is able to 
operate in a way that very much fits with Dominion doctrine and tactics. That's partially another reason why the Hutets were not ever issued to the Joint Orders, because the Hutets are very much standoff, slug it out with the enemy in a big linear battle. The Joint Orders do not operate as a Cardassian force, they are a Dominion force, and so they need ships that can operate as part of that force. Also joining the Joint Orders, and, and perhaps the most iconic part of the Joint Orders, are the Galor Mark IVs. These can be distinguished by their purple deflector and basards. They are also constructed, actually, in the fashion of the original run Galors, not the Galor Three Star. It's sort of just a show of status, because those were always regarded as the higher quality Galors. The main addition to the Galor IV is it has the ability to carry out anti-proton scans, and its main spiral wave disruptor cannon has been replaced with a Polaron phaser. So it is now armed with a heavy Polaron cannon. And this goes for pretty much all of the Cardassian ships in the Joint Orders. They will all incorporate Polaron weapons as part of their arsenal. Another addition is, of course, the Sartan-class frigate. The Sartan is a very, very effective frigate. It is the most up-to-date frigate the Cardassians currently possess. And again, it is similarly armed with Polaron weapons and is very, very good when it is operating alongside Jem'Hadar attack ships. So, of course, as well as all these Cardassian ships, the Dominion are making use of their own ships in these orders and combining them together in joint formation. So you have Sartans flying with Jem'Hadar attack ships, Galor Fours supported by Jem'Hadar attack ships, Dominion battlecruisers supported by Sartans, Janissaries supported by Jem'Hadar attack ships. And all of this is designed to allow this force to operate effectively as a Dominion force. While it has Cardassian elements, they are incorporated in such a way that they serve Dominion doctrine and tactics. Overwhelming speed and overwhelming numbers and overwhelming force brought together in a tidal wave of not particularly heavy formations, but powerful formations with a good mix of light and heavy ships that is able to take on pretty much anything that it will encounter and it is very versatile and very simple to operate. Now I should mention in terms of the organization that these are actually Vorta-led formations. The Cardassians will at most, the highest ranked Cardassian, will be a Gull. But above that level, every other commander in the formation is a Vorta. So it is still very much primarily a Dominion created unit and a Dominion led unit. The Cardassians are ultimately just the foot soldiers. It is the Vorta calling the shots in these formations, which is very much a contrast particularly to early in the Dominion War, where actually in large scale joint operations, the Cardassians would often take the lead because they professed knowledge and understanding of Alpha Quadrant style warfare. And well, at this point, the Dominion are no longer listening to them. And with the Joint Orders, they don't have to anymore because they now have Cardassian troops who are completely and utterly loyal to the Dominion and loyal to the cause and loyal to the Founders. As much as these are intended as a elite crack unit designed to reinforce the front lines and, and rally flagging units, it's also as much intended for work behind the lines. This is an internal policing unit. This is to make sure that the Cardassians on the front lines, those Cardassian regulars, hold their ground and think twice about running. As much as they are an elite reserve, they are also a policing troop designed to keep the Dominion's other more disparate and disorganized units in line. And that is really the dark side of the Joint Orders. They are highly motivated, unfaltering soldiers. These are the best that Cardassia have to offer, and they have now sworn to give their lives and their loyalty and their souls to the Dominion, to the Founders. They will do anything for the Dominion. They will even kill their own 
A joint order soldier is so fanatical he might not even hesitate to execute his own family if he suspected them of treachery. That's what we're dealing with. These are the joint orders. They are the Dominion's best troops and they are their most loyal and ruthless and it is they who now stand between Cardassia and its liberation. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you found this informative. If you did, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments, share it around, and if you can, a super thanks is always welcome. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you to my members, my Navarks, David Reeves, Tully DT, and Jeffrey Ballard. My commanders, Miami Jules, Captain's Quarters, Chase Rector, PQSK, Philip Ty, Jeff Hallam, Bird Monster, Mark Philippe, Robert Sampson, Sean Farrell, Guillermo Martinez, Das Blas, Adam Bowman, and Nathaniel Mead. And I salute my Centurions, Pendleberry, BOS Domestic Disputes, Marcus Hall, Julian Arnott, Freedom Trooper, Okokatum Quaesto, Squadra Course, and Gabe Logan. And I thank all my sub-lieutenants. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I will see you all in the next video.